Hi, it's Miss Genevieve here, and I'm here this week bringing you a story about peace and how we can generate it in our own lives. So welcome. Um, gather around to hear the story. And before we begin, let's all take a deep breath together and say our affirmation. So the affirmation is, I'll read it first. I act with inner peace and fairness in all I do. I act with inner peace and fairness in all I do. So let's take a deep breath in, breathing in from the sky and let's blow it out like we're blowing out a candle. One more time, deep breath in, breathing in the sky and a blow out. I act with peace and fairness in all I do. Let me tell you the story of the peace pilgrim. Oh, do you know what a pilgrim is? A pilgrim is someone who wanders. And sometimes pilgrims wander to a place um, and sometimes pilgrims wander for a thing. In this story, our pilgrim, the peace pilgrim, is wandering for a thing, for an idea. And the idea is peace. So let's listen to her story. Walking for Peace. When Mildred Norman began walking across the United States, she changed her name to Peace Pilgrim. She said, I will remain a wanderer until all people learn the way of peace. Her message was to overcome evil with good, hatred with love, and falsehood with truth. She walked along busy streets and country roads through big cities and small towns. You would have been able to recognize her because she had the words peace pilgrim in big white letters across the front of her blue tunic. Her tunic had pockets all around the bottom of it where she carried her only possessions, a comb, a folding toothbrush, a pen, and a small and small blue leaflets about peace that she passed out along the way. She never carried any money. She completely trusted in God to provide her what she needed through the goodness of people. She said, I'll go without food until it was offered to me. The longest she went without eating was three or four meals before someone gave her something to eat. If no one offered her a place to stay, she just slept wherever she could sometimes in a cornfield or under a tree, but she never saw her life as a hardship. It was a joyous journey in freedom. How did she decide to live a life like this? Well, people knew her as a girl, never expected her to become a peace pilgrim. She grew up in New Jersey with her mother, father, sister, brother, and three aunts and one uncle. With so many people in the same house, Mildred was surrounded by lots of activity and lively discussions. She liked learning, and one year she received an award for never missing a day of school. Swimming was her favorite sport. Her classmates remember how daring she was bravely diving off a high bridge into the river below. In high school, she followed the motto, if you want to have friends, be friendly. She based this idea on the golden rule, do unto others as you would have them do unto you. She had lots of opportunities to put her motto into action. One time while working at a summer job, a woman she worked with got very angry at her. She told Mildred she hated her. Mildred wanted to make peace. She thought about how she could show love to the woman and got an idea to give her a bouquet. I know you love flowers, Mildred said to her. Here are some from my garden. When Mildred handed the woman the beautiful bouquet, her hatred disappeared and she and Mildred became friends. When Mildred was a young woman, she wanted to live her life in a way that made a difference to people. One night, she went out into the woods and prayed to God, please use me. After that prayer, a great peace came over her. It felt so wonderful. The spiritual experience changed her life. From that time on, she decided never to be fearful or angry. It was hard to do, but for 15 years, she practiced being loving, kind, and helpful. Her very first long walk was the Appalachian Trail that goes from Georgia to Maine. While walking, she had a vision that showed her the next step of her life. She said, 
I saw a map of the United States with the large cities marked. It looked as though someone had taken a colored crayon and marked a zigzag line along the map going from coast to coast, from border to border, all the way from Los Angeles to New York City. I knew I was supposed to talk to everyone who would, every, anyone who would listen to me about the way to peace. After this experience, she felt like a new person. She no longer used the name Mildred. She, Mildred, she called herself Peace Pilgrim. When she told her friends and family she what she was going to do, they thought she was crazy. No one gave her even a word of encouragement, but that didn't stop her. She went ahead and did what she felt inspired to do. She realized that one way to have inner peace is to replace negative and hurtful feelings with love and peacefulness. She told people, if you realized how powerful your thoughts are, you would never think a negative thought. I don't eat junk food. I don't think junk thoughts. Just let me tell you, junk thoughts can destroy you even more quickly than junk food. As she walked, she helped many people. One day, an angry young man tried to hurt her. She could have run away from him because he was carrying a heavy pack on his back, but she didn't. She knew there was a spark of goodness in him, just like there is in all people. She looked at him with love in her heart. You didn't hit back, he said. He felt her love for him and became sorry for hitting her, and he was never violent again. After she walked 25,000 miles, she stopped counting. But people kept walking for many, but she kept walking for many more years. People could hardly believe it. When they asked her where she found all her energy, she replied that she was walking on the endless energy that comes from inner peace. Some people wanted to follow her example. What should we do, they asked. Peace Pilgrim told them to just look at a situation and say, what can I do to be of service in this situation? She said that sometimes it might be a helping hand, a kind word, or a pleasant smile they could offer. She told them they could always find a way to share peace, because she always did. Peace Pilgrim walked for almost 30 years, and her inner peace touched the heart of the whole world. I wonder if maybe this would be an interesting story to share with our loved ones about the bravery of peace, about how peace is a journey. And so I'm going to invite your family to do a little activity together. I invite you to put on some peaceful music, whatever that means for your family, and lay out some construction paper around your house in a pattern or a path. And as the peaceful music is playing, I invite you each to take a turn walking on the peace path. And as you walk, try to walk the way peace feels in your body. So call peace in and see how peace causes you to move. And you can take turns doing it and then talk about it after. It might be kind of fun and silly too, or sometimes you might have some big feelings about peace and that's all okay. Or your family is there to feel all those things with you. So once again, let's close with our affirmation. I act with inner peace and fairness in all I do. A big sky breath, scooping up the air and blowing it out. I act with inner peace and fairness in all I do. I hope this lesson blesses you a little bit on your peace path. I know it has blessed me on my peace path. And I will see you next time.